This is Gabnet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. and white will be here until midnight tonight yeah ladies and gentlemen larry bubbles brown take it larry <laughs> i talk too yeah, much you well, got it Alex. when we do You're these things I, I feel guilty in that i call you and then i talk no i'd rather hear you talk i'm tapped out so. You're tapped out. You've you've got the best stories. So. Well, you know, you, you everybody's got great stories, and if you just just try, you know. We'll all have a great story when we see that mushroom cloud over the horizon. <laughs> yes, when I was a kid, <laughs> I, you know, remember, you don't remember this. Uh, maybe you do. After World War Two, World War Two, we had the big red menace, which. You know, really has never come to fruition till just now. <laughs> you know, but we had the Red Menace, and every every leader in the Soviet Union who was, you know, came into power was the evil guy Khrushchev, who was a pretty nice guy actually. Um, and then Stalin was bad. Stalin was horrible. Yeah. I mean, you know, here's what happened with Stalin. Did you ever hear about his death? Yeah, it's, uh, they did a movie about that. It was pretty good. Yeah, and it was kind of like that. It was like, well, Stalin looks like he had a stroke. It was something like that, right? Shall we go get a doctor? Yeah, I'll go. Do you know anybody who has a car? Well, <laughs> I don't know. I have a car you could use. Well, no, I don't want to use yours. Anybody else here? And they were taking forever to go get a doctor. Because they knew if they didn't, he'd die. So they took their time. When they finally got a doctor there, I think Stalin was dead. You know. Yeah, they were terrified he wasn't going to die and he was going to kill them all. <laughs> well, I mean, you know what amazes me? How, how? Maybe you can explain this to me. How do people like Stalin manage to kowtow, or, or to, what's the word I'm looking for? Not kowtow, uh, to intimidate so many people make them so fearful of him. Well, I think many of these people, like Stalin and him, I think they're sociopaths, and sociopaths seem to have some ability to intimidate people like mm-hmm. that. But how does how did he do it? I mean, I mean, you, you got to realize he was intimidating everybody for years. Oh yeah, he, I right? think he he may have killed more people than Hitler. I think. Oh yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, if nothing more, just in in willing to give up his people for the cause. Uh, I mean, Stalingrad alone was how many millions of people died there, you know? And he just let it happen. It needed to happen. We got to fight them there and take a stand, and and so on. And I'm going, geez, you know, how how do you how does a guy like that survive? Were they, were they that afraid of him? You know, and then when he would say to somebody, take him out and shoot him, they would take a guy out and shoot him. Why don't you just say no and turn the gun on Stalin? You know? Yeah, why I mean, wouldn't someone do that? Yeah, you know? I mean, I just, I don't understand it. And I mean, he was, I mean, people feared him, literally feared him. Um, so anyway, whatever. Uh, I, Stalin, the word Stalin, I think, means Iron Man. Really? Yeah. Okay. So I think we should have Stalin played by Robert Downey Jr. Uh, in some <laughs> movie soon. Uh, but anyway, so what's happening out there with you in California? I mean, I like to I like to check in and see exactly how my friends are doing. Well, a five six dollar gas. Uh, what else? Uh, San Francisco, let's see, the, the Millennium Tower is still leaning a little more. They're still trying to shore that up. Oh, yeah, there's this building in San Francisco called the Millennium Tower that was built 
How tall is it? Do you know? It's probably 40 or 50 stories. Yeah. Do you know in San Francisco, that's a tall building. Well, in San Francisco, that for years, when I was growing up there, they couldn't build a building taller than 20 stories. They just couldn't. Yeah. There was a law in San Francisco. No building can be taller than 20 stories. Part of the reason was they wanted to maintain the look of the San Francisco hills, which were very famous. Okay, And if you had something taller than 20 stories, it would obliterate the view of the hills. So anyway, um, there was a limit to how tall you could make them. Now you got something like 40. I don't know how tall the Millennium Tower is. But they build this building, and what happens? It's you tell the story. I I don't know the complete story. On yeah, it. they didn't make the foundation. They're supposed to go down two hundred and forty feet. They only went down eighty feet. So doesn't have a good foundation. The building started leaning. I think it's leaning like eighteen inches now. <laughs> which on a, a building that's huge. So. Well, if you take a ball bearing, I think, and put it on the floor, doesn't it roll? Yeah, they had some guy that lived there. He, the news crew came up. He put the golf ball on the floor, just rolled rapidly to the other side of the room. Oh God! Oh God! So you wouldn't want to be. That's that's also a kind of landfill. So if, that, if an earthquake hits, I think that place would definitely go down. Wow! Wow! That's something. Yeah, it's really it's made, a lot of famous. Joe Montana's got a place there. It's a really expensive. Uh, place to live yeah but i, I mean how, are they shoring it up aren't they doing something? they're trying to shore it up but it's it's uh that's a really rough job and uh so if the they didn't leaking into the underground garage and if they didn't do anything about it let's say they didn't do anything about it would that thing fall eventually i think it probably would the way it's going yeah. i mean but how many years uh they're making estimates now no one seems to know really you wouldn't want to buy a place there, I'll say that. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. But then again, if you say only rich people can get it, fuck them. You know? Yeah. <laughs> fuck them. How, how, how and you know what they'll do? They'll, they'll, they'll sue, and the city will wind up paying. So we'll pay for it. That's what will happen. How big's your apartment? Mine's, uh, I've got a very small studio. This very small studio. That means your bed. Well, the, it's a studio. It's like kind of big, but. It, but I mean, your bed. Your bed is in the same room with your dining room table. Yeah, and then I got a little, couple of big closets and a kitchen. That's Some good. people who had studios would take it and block off the area where the bed was, and then it would kind of seem like it was a one-bedroom apartment. You know. Almost, yeah. And how much you pay a month for that? I'm up to seven hundred. Oh God! Well, you pay two hundred dollars more than I do. Yeah, <laughs> really? What? Yeah, yeah. Now you are—are are you finally settled on that? I, they're supposedly sending us the lease for five hundred dollars. Yeah, but if, wow. if but when they go into appeal, if they appeal it, and the appeals judge decides that it has to be twenty two twenty five. Or maybe eight fifty is another possibility. We have to pay the difference later on down the line, retroactively. All right. Oh. Yeah. Which uh, I'll live with that because I I give the I give the uh, uh, landlord the money now, okay. Uh, but if he loses, I don't trust him to give us the money back. Right. All right. Because then he'd have to pay us the difference between twenty two twenty five and five hundred, you know. So anyway, it, it, the thing just you know, it's like it went on for like nine years, and you thought it was over. When I walked out of the courtroom that day, they said we made a deal. Part of it I didn't like because we had to pay the guy who lived here seventy five thousand dollars, but we figure that was rent for the years, and you know what the hell. Uh, if it shuts him up and gets him off the off the grid, fine. But uh, you know, we we had to do that. Uh, but uh, you know, and we thought, but we walked out. We felt it was all settled and everything like that. No way. All of a sudden, time to make up a lease for us. They want to charge us twenty two twenty five, and 
the deal we made in the courtroom was as follows. Um, uh, and everybody agreed to it and testified to the judge that they agreed with the deal. And that was, I give this guy 75000 He gets out of the way. And then, so far as the lease is concerned, we would pay $2,225 a month unless the uh, rent commission came out with a lower price or the judge decided on a lower price. Then it would have to be at that lower price. So the judge comes out with his verdict, and he says that apartment should be leased for five hundred dollars. Wow! Because the the people, the landlords, did not do due diligence. They didn't, uh, uh, you know. They kept raising the price all wrong, and things like that. And so I'm telling you that it now can only be rented for five hundred dollars. Well. That means we should have a lease in for five hundred dollars, and for a while the landlord was saying, "Nope, nope, not going to give it to you for five hundred Well, he had to, so finally they gave up and gave it to us, and supposedly we're getting a lease in the next couple of days for five hundred dollars that's amazing well, and I, it, it'd be nice if the appeal fails, uh which it well might I think there's a good chance it could. Um, then we are we have an apartment for the rest of our lives at five hundred dollars a month, maybe with raises every couple of years, you know. But so it goes up to five twenty-five, you know. I mean, but that, 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 that's where we stood. But it was just so frustrating that after all of it, and walking out and saying, "Okay, we made a deal, we're out of here," okay. That the, we then still had to have problems with the uh, with the landlord in getting the money out of them. So that that's our story. You know, we've had to live we've had to live with this so long. That's one of the longest legal battles I've ever heard of. Well, there are there have been longer, I think, I think. But this thing is well on to this is nine years. This is nine years. Yeah, easily we what we moved in in. We moved in in 2010, 2013, all this went down. Yeah, 2013. So we're nine years. Wow. Uh, well, anyway, so it, but that's still a good rent for you, seven fifty yeah. a month. Yeah. You know. As it goes, yeah, it's probably a couple of grand under market rate. So. Yeah, but now you, during COVID, you didn't go out, right? Uh, I went. I went outside. Yeah. There was nothing to do, but I did go out. Yeah, because you had to get out of that apartment. You couldn't stay. Oh yeah, I go crazy to live in this dump. Yeah. See, we stayed in here for the better part of a year, but we've got twenty five hundred square space. feet. Yeah, twenty five hundred square feet. That's bigger than most homes. You're absolutely right, and in fact, these were homes on top of each other that was the concept all right and this has uh, this place has i think we counted it at 11 rooms <laughs> you see you got to put some pictures of it i'd love to see it uh, i do have some somewhere online a, a software the, the um uh, we have a foyer okay how many apartments have a foyer <laughs> we have a foyer that's one room then we have the living room uh, with a fireplace. Then we have a dining room on the other side of it with another fireplace. Then we have a huge kitchen. And to the side of the kitchen is a pantry, which was also the maid's room in the old days. And then uh, a, a bathroom, a small half bathroom. All right. I don't know how many rooms we're up to already. Then we got a long hallway, and off the hallway is a bedroom. And then, then another bedroom at the end of the hallway, which we call the guest room. And then over to the side, there's yet another bedroom, which we call the office, which I'm in right now talking to you. And then there's another big bathroom. Not huge, but big bathroom. Uh, that's, uh, that's our apartment. Yeah, that sounds great. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's a lot of breathing room here, you know. And... Uh, when people say, do you go out often? Well, why? 
<laughs> you know? Today it's uh, how many degrees? It's 45 degrees out there. Yeah, it's not bad. Uh, but, uh, you know, what what's out there to do? You know. Oh, but it's New York. Yeah, yeah. Nothing goes on in New York. Truth of the matter is, the city wouldn't sleep is always drowsy. Okay? So... <laughs> What's the nearest store near you? Nearest what? Supermarket? Anything, yeah. They just opened up one that's a German-owned supermarket called Lidl, L-I-D-L. And um, they claim that they have the lowest prices on produce. And they do. It's amazing. Uh, and the produce is terrific. So that's our... Really? Yeah, that's our... our big deal that's the big new store that we have the rest of them are just you know supermarkets have been here for years and they're kind of some of them are good some of them have been forced to get better you know when the neighborhood was just basically blacks living here and a slum of a neighborhood uh you you know these these supermarkets were eh. but as the gentrification of harlem took place so does the uh, you know so do the uh, supermarkets you know so I felt really uh, really good about that so you know but it, that's that's it and then we have, we have we're getting some nice restaurants in this area and so on. now you I know you where you you live where exactly uh, down towards the marina yeah, I'm in the marina actually. you're in the marina but you're where in, in uh, on what side of Lombard? On the uh, north side of Lombard. On the north side of Lombard. Okay. So, um, so wait a minute. So you're you're closer to the marina than you are to the hills. Yeah, I'm about four blocks from the oh, marina. Okay. Say for right. you. Yeah, see, because I never went over to your place, and then again, I don't know anybody who has. No, no one comes here. No. <laughs> I mean, I always thought of you, Larry, as somebody who was, like, uh, collapsible. That, <laughs> that you would come on, you would either do my show or you would do a comedy show somewhere, and then they would fold you up and put you somewhere. <laughs> and and I never figured out... I, I, maybe it's because I, was, I had a certain selfish streak in me that didn't care where the fuck you lived. <laughs> you know? <laughs> But I knew you lived in my neighborhood. Yes, in and fact, you, uh, I had a gig at the Palace of Fine Arts in November, and I remember I walked by your old place. So. Yeah, how how um, you know how, uh, uh, how long have you lived in that apartment? It's eighty five. Wow, that's eighty five, ninety five. Yeah, God, that's so long. Jesus, hundred uh, years, okay. God. It's go almost at forty years that you've been yeah. in that apartment. Sad, isn't it? Okay, so the question is, how much did it cost you when you first moved in there? When I first moved, it was two fifty. Two fifty. Yeah. That's pretty high. It was back then. You you could find studios in San Francisco for one seventy five in worse neighborhoods back then. Yeah, but you felt then it all changed. And what has kept you in that apartment? I mean, why haven't you moved? I mean, I would, you, the tendency would be for me, if I were in a studio, was, well, times are a little better. I think I'll move into a better apartment. Yeah, I just, uh, my fear of change, I guess, kept me here, even though I hate this place. But, um, yeah, I, I would definitely like to have more room. And... You probably wouldn't know what to do with it now. I know. I, I could stay in all day for not be depressed now the big news is is that you're getting a new phone <laughs> i am <laughs> what, uh, oh i did actually yeah i you, got a new flip phone you uh, they sent you a flip phone i went down to sprint and uh i said they offered they offered me a samsung something smartphone right yeah and i said i want a flip phone and the guy the guy said, do we have any of those here? And somebody went in the back, and 20 minutes came out later, hey, we got one left. And I took it. So it's not a smartphone? No. I was hoping you would get a smartphone, damn it. 
Well, they the, showed me the Samsung, and I just said, I'll never learn how to use that. Oh, come people. on. Come on. You're not a moron. Yeah, I am. I think I am. My IQ, as you get older, your age goes up, your IQ goes down. Well, no, but they, 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 they think of, you, you do text, don't you? I do text. How do you text? Tell them how you text. You have to hit each button, well, one to three times. <laughs> Depending on the letter you're searching for. Don't you realize that if you got yourself one of these more modern phones, it would just have a little keyboard there and you could just type it out? Uh, or some you can just talk and say what you want to text, right? Yes, you can do that too. That would be less tedious. So why didn't you get that phone? Oh, I just figured I wouldn't be able to, the phone would just be a pain in the ass to use. What do you mean, pain in the ass? It's like any other phone. You just bring up the, uh, the the dialing pad and you dial the number. That's it. Uh, I just saw all those apps and icons. Well, no, you, it's, it's, it's over it, when it, I saw that thing. It's, well, here's the thing: you got all those apps, okay, and they're wonderful. But forget it. If you want a phone that's going to make a call, the other phone, the one you didn't take, would do it easier and better. Plus. You would have all the numbers that you call in there, and you would just be able to go through your phone book and just push a button, that push on the on the name, and it would dial it for you. Yeah, well, I can remember into the numbers. Okay, but I'm telling you, <laughs> your life would be better right now if you had not gotten another flip phone. Wait a minute, do they even have a flip phone that's like 4G or whatever? Uh, I think it's 5G, I don't know. I don't know. I think I just needed that. Someone said if I only used the phone, I wouldn't have needed the 5G. But because I do text, uh, I guess the data goes over that, and that's why it comes into play. And you still have you still you still have to um, uh, hit three times to get a letter. Yeah, yeah. Oh, crazy. I remember those days, but you know that was long ago. I know. So how um, I just didn't realize they still made flip phones that would be f like 5G. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I th would have thought if you wanted a flip phone, they just weren't there to be found. You know, or at least one that was a 5G phone. Yeah, well, they said that uh, a few old people, which I am now, but they said, yeah, just people like you want these things, and we still have a couple old timer yeah did they look at you kind of strange they kind of <laughs> you know did they try to convince you that you'd be better off with a uh... well no because I know the, the I have a one of my friends actually works there you know him Larry Stahl he yeah. works there yeah and Larry let you do this he did grudgingly. He just thought it'd be better if I took the Samsung. But he, he'll be able to learn it. And I said, No, I won't. You're, you're. Uh, I'm sorry, Larry. You're really incorrigible. I know. Oh well. Okay. Well, audience, all you'll ever see is this uh, pl uh, picture of Larry and some bubbles going around, and and <laughs> and his name. Uh, and with the audio because he didn't go out and get the new phone that they were offering him which would have allowed you to see his his face well you don't want anybody to do that do you no and then i'd have to set the phone I, and i'm sure i would have that would have been easy for me to set that up and i'd get frustrated and when i get frustrated i tend to break things <laughs> I have mechanical things I do. Yeah, I throw them against the wall. I think this is the thing we love about you. Anyway, uh, listen, uh, uh, take care of yourself. Be safe. <laughs> the COVID's pretty much gone right there. Well, they're acting like it's over, so I guess it is, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, you probably don't have to wear a mask into restaurants any longer. Those are gone. Yeah, we're done with that. I don't think you really have to wear them outside because they found out after a while that it wasn't really spread much outside. No, you never needed them outside. Yeah, so, you know, look at it this way. We dodged a goddamn bullet, man. I guess so, yeah. We had a gun aimed at us and... <laughs>
you know, we somehow survived it. Good talking to you, Larry. You too, Alex. Okay, bye bye. See you next week. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Now in its seventh year, talk like you've never heard it before. When here again tonight, we have, uh, I'm sure, uh, a big problem with the, uh, with uh, the uh, what do you call it, the. Uh, uh, final four, what is that? I don't know. What is it? The final five, the final seven, the final eight, the final ten. I don't know. But last night uh, we had hardly any people calling because they were all watching the games, I suppose, I imagine. But anyway, so here we go. Anyway, uh, I'm, I'm so sorry that we have that problem tonight, but, you know, those things happen, and uh, uh, they could happen more. Tonight, we have no idea what the other problems are tonight. But anyway, let's bring everybody in here. Oh, somebody had to leave. Uh, uh, let me see here. We lost, uh, well, we got uh, Alan, and we've got uh, Jeff, and um, Ray was here, but Ray's now gone, so we'll just have to deal with that. Oh, man, I, I screwed with something before I went back on, and we had to... We had to stop it all. Okay, all right. Anyway, let me. Here comes Ray. All righty. Uh, hello to all of you. How are you this evening? These Good are the people. Th th these are the people who don't give a cra don't give a crap about basketball, right? Nope. <laughs> this is more important than any basketball game. Uh, well, I don't necessarily agree with you on that one, but you know. I hmm. thought you didn't like sports. <clears throat> I, I don't. don't. Oh. No, I don't like sports. I mean, I like. No. Look, it's not that I don't like sports. They're just certain sports I like because I consider them. I like sports which are endeavors of uh, execution. You know what I'm saying? In other words, it isn't just that you got to be the toughest, the brawniest, uh, the uh, fastest, or whatever. You're you're really the person you're probably challenging most of all is yourself to best your record and so i like the olympics for that reason you know in the darts. olympic sports what darts darts i had a girlfriend <laughs> who was into darts she was darts crazy so darts crazy you would have thought she was irish you know but uh she she would go play darts all the time and she got she was oh god she was crazy over it well, you have a sports Emmy, right? I have a sports Emmy, yeah. yeah. Well, you're a sportsman. Well, you know, it's it, I have two Emmys, and one is an individual Emmy, and the other one is a group Emmy, all right, for a bunch of us who participated in a program. So that's the sports Emmy. So that is not necessarily an Emmy for me alone, all ah. right? But the other one is, so that one I'm proud of. That one I would lay claim to, and screw the rest of you. Here comes John Larkin. We haven't seen John in a while. John, where you been? Proud of. That one I would lay claim to. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Through the rest of you. Uh, uh, John, you got to kill my audio. Hi. Hey, there you go. How's it going? So where you been? We haven't seen you in a uh, while. Yeah. No, we're really just doing a lot. I've, I've been working at night. You've been working at night? Yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot of um, concerts at the Warfield. Yeah. Okay. All right. Seen any good concerts lately? Uh Sparks was good. Sparks. What? That's an old band, isn't it? Yeah, I know. I know. Goes back they, to when I was at the, the Quake. Yeah, yeah. And I'm trying to remember, up there. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to remember what their big hit was. Uh, this town isn't big enough for the both of us. No. Like no. There's another one. There's another one that was really big for them for Sparks. Uh, How many people here have heard of Sparks? See, not me. One of the most unknown bands of all time. So in, in that documentary on Netflix, there's a picture of them standing outside your studio on Ninth Street. Oh, really? Yeah. Really? What yeah, and it says there's a sign in the background. It says, "No one will be allowed into Alex's show before 6 a.m." <laughs> what what documentary was that? It's on Netflix. It's called Sparks Brothers. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, 
Well, I told you, I told you about a month ago about it on Netflix called Sparks Brothers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Well, then I'll have to go look at it because anything has my name on it, I'm interested in. Yeah. Yeah. Because, <laughs> because I'm self-centered, you know, well, and that's the reason. I guess, I guess they were a guest like on that. your show back in the '80s or something. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I guess they were. I don't remember. <laughs> You know, I, I was I, that whole period of time kind of is a blur to me now. You know, it's not it's not a blur because of drugs or anything else. It just is a blur. It's a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. I mean, sometimes people say to me, "And I was on your show," and blah 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 blah. I, like I met up with um, um, uh, Black. Uh, 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 oh boy, who's the comedian? Black. Uh, 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 First name was Lewis Black. Lewis Black. And I said, uh, Lewis, gee, uh, good to meet you. He says, oh, well, you have before. I said, when? He said, in San Francisco on your show. I was a guest. I said, gee, I don't, I don't remember. He says, neither does anybody else because back then I didn't have an act that anybody wanted to see. No, yeah. no way. Yeah, no. a lot of good people come on. No, no, no. But he said oh. that oh, you know, okay. back then, okay? Yeah. And what he was what he was referring to was the fact that he wasn't screaming and yelling in those days. He wasn't that they, he didn't. And once he came up with that screaming thing, he became famous. Okay, <laughs> so he said at that time I wasn't that famous or that well known, but you had me on your show, and you know I want to thank you for that. So that was years later, though, that I finally met up with him and got along with him very well. I like Lewis a lot, you know. So. He's hilarious. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. He certainly is. Uh, John, uh, Los Lobos plays at the Warfield a lot, huh? No, not too much. Um, I've seen them more at the Fillmore. I mean the Fillmore, sorry. Yeah. Fillmore. I went and saw him at the Fillmore a couple times recently. Yeah. 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 Um, but who else was playing there that you saw recently? Well, uh, um, last night they had this guy named Youngblood who's a uh, – a trans singer from England, kind of a punk singer. Mm -hmm. So they had a lot of, a lot of trans, young, you know, young kids, young yeah. trans kids. Yeah. It was pretty good. Yeah. He was interesting. Um, and then there was Jason Albine or Albine played, hmm. you know, something weird. I never get tipped at a show, you know, for showing people to their seats. Yeah. But at this Jason Albine show, two people tipped me in the, in the night so i got thirty dollars in tips in one night really and i never ever get tips but it was just out of at that show two people well me. for people who are watching you're 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 an usher at concerts right you take people help people to their seat and find their yeah. seat and whatever right right you look at the stub you see what the number is on it you lead them to that seat uh is it cust should you get a tip i mean people don't think you give tips to those guys not necessarily, yeah. It's not necessary. I don't expect one. You yeah, know? but maybe but people should it, tip you. But it's just weird. The same show, I get two tips, but I've never, rarely ever gotten a tip there before. Hmm. What do you think it was about his audience that uh, was so typical? I don't know. <laughs> I have no idea. It's just, you know, was, what are the odds? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, so uh, what? Uh, how are you doing, Josh? Uh, good. Yeah? Yeah? Yeah. What's up? Oh, anything. What's up in your life? Anything interesting or special? Uh, nothing interesting. Just uh, normal days, I guess. Just normal days, right? Yeah. Yeah. Nothing Nothing going on uh, out of the ordinary. Yeah. Uh, and uh, how about you, Alan? Anything? I was going to go to Las Vegas in a couple of weeks, but my... Uh, Toe surgery is not healing as well. They removed part of a toenail because it was ingrown. And, you know, when you get older and you're fat, you know, you just don't heal so quick. So it sounds like Las Vegas is off. Eh, it'll be there. And uh, how yeah. about you, Alan? Anything? All right. Brian's there, but Brian's got Brian's doing a Jeff on us. Yeah, uh, so I do. Nobody, <laughs> Alex, nobody can see you. I oh, mean, everybody you, oh. can see you only. I got so flummoxed on this whole thing that I, I forgot know. to do this. There yeah. we go. There's okay, the... and I, I did my work. I'll see you guys uh, Monday. Oh, you got to go? No, just joking. Oh, I'm okay. just trying to figure out what the heck's going on. Uh, turn, turn on your camera, I guess. 
Yeah. There, oh, you, there you go. Lion, yeah. Hey, I'm sorry, right. folks, because I screwed up tonight, and then when I came back, I didn't look to see oh, I, that, yeah. that I wasn't Marcus. on. There we go. Yeah. Go Giants. Yeah. They're, losing, they're losing for nothing, but it's okay. But anyway, I think the show be better is just an audio only show anyway. So I'm glad that we were able to let you hear it that way for a while. Yeah. Uh, I uh, man, I just been screwing up tonight. I'm I'm just bothered by stuff. I got this guy's coming tomorrow to pick up all the stuff from the apartment and there's arguments about oh, what he can geez. take and what he can't take. And, uh, you know, I'm just so fed up with it. I'm ready to tell him, uh, go sue us to get in, you know. Uh, you know. So uh, finally, I, I did, uh, there was a rule that, that anything that was, um, uh, 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 you know, uh, adhered to a wall, like a light sconce or something like that, he couldn't take. And so he tried to charge Marjorie for two ceiling fans we have in the kitchen. And um, uh, I said afterwards, after I looked at it, the Marjorie said she'd pay $100 each for them. Uh, I said, you know, we don't have to pay for those because those are in a wall, right? And then I went back and I looked at the court proceedings and there was an argument over the ceiling fans. So I took $200 away from him and said, you can't have those, and he didn't argue about it. And then I suddenly noticed that uh, actually in the proceedings it said we would negotiate about them. So uh, uh, I told Marjorie to give him back $200. So, you know. He probably didn't even install them. The tenant before him probably no, installed no, them. No, 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 no. He oh. installed these for sure. You know, but, I mean, he could take them, but then I just got to go buy two new ones and pay my super to install them. But, you know, I have to go like half a week without lights in the kitchen. So, you know, uh, I'd rather have them than not have them. But, I mean, he's just being a pain in the ass about most of this. So I, you know, and then I suddenly realized something. He owes us $4,200. It's a little thing called a security deposit. So uh, uh, I want that money back. <laughs> that chance. Does, what? Does, doesn't your new landlord have to um, collect that? He collected uh, five hundred dollars. Five hundred dollars and four cents is a security deposit. Oh wow! You, you should get back the forty-two hundred bucks then. Huh? You should get back the forty-two hundred. Oh bucks. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So, I mean, I fully expect the 4200 When the guy right? comes tomorrow to collect all the stuff, say, I need my $4,200, and then you can have your stuff. Well, here's the thing. He owes, he owes us 4200 My question is, does he owe us $4,200 plus interest? Yeah. Depends on where you're at. Around here, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I believe so, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I own rental property here in the Bay Area and also in Oregon, but in Oregon, they, they don't do it. But in California, you have to pay interest. It's not much. It's two or three percent, but it, it is money. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's something, you know. After the show tonight, go on the Internet and see what New York City requires. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, but anyway, so I've, I've been bothered. Maybe you'll get a couple free ceiling fans. I've been bothered and preoccupied about that tonight. So that's why you just saw me for so long and I didn't even notice that I was on. Uh, because what happens is I also look at the uh, at the Zoom panel. I don't look at the what's on the air. And I just assumed I'd gone over there or something and I didn't. So. I see Tony yawning. I mean, that. Is the coffee I sent you isn't working? What's going on? You didn't, didn't tell him. You, you, didn't, you didn't tell him it's non-caffeinated. Oh, no. You were supposed to shut up about that, Alex. Oh. <laughs> didn't you know? I just poured it into my. Uh, I poured it into my. Uh, I saved the. You know what? You know the big things at Costco when I finish the folders, I save it. Now I poured his coffee into it. I marked it though, so I know what it is. Have yeah, but that's, coffee tonight. but that's non-caffeinated. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, God, are you trying it? I was going to have it tomorrow when I was watching Kentucky. It'll still taste the same. Don't worry. Yeah, no, you won't be able to tell the difference. You don't think so? The I, only I, difference you won't be able, you won't find with it is that you won't feel it. You won't be climbing the walls. Oh, it's not my coffee rush. <laughs> ah, you see, that's what he's going well, for. Well, try oh. it out. There's, there's still a little caffeine and decaf. Tony, I would never think about doing drugs. I'm going to do my mother's leftover drugs. I'm going to throw them out. 
What kind of what, drug drug. what drugs does she have there? You know? She has the one that. I, what's the one that takes the edge off? She was getting like. There are a lot of them that take the edge off. Yeah, really, Valium. No, it was something else really, really small. Her gambling, really Alex, Michael, yeah. like One time I gave it to her and I was watching. It's very mild, like a sedative. And when I gave it to her one time, I was observing her. And she really did get like, relaxed. Is and it Librium? Say, what, did, what did she give me? I says, Ma, Dr. Rubin said it's okay to take one. A- <laughs> it made it a little bit faster. Was it Librium? I can check. Let me see. Go get all her drugs and bring them back. Let's yeah, see what yeah, you got might, there. Yeah, we might want some of them. <laughs> because you know they do expire, so why don't you send them over to me? Okay. He, he's gone now. You know. uh, how are you doing tonight, Jeff? Good. 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 Went to see my new uh, orthopedic doctor. Oh, good. And how does yeah. he feel your orthopedes are doing? She said, uh, this is all that's left of mom. Wait, wait a minute, hold she on. We'll go nothing, through them in a second. Hold on. Yes, Jeff? She says, there's nothing that I can do to help you. Mm-hmm. However, wow. that's incredible. here's the things that you can do to help yourself. And so what, what did she tell you you had to do? Oh, mostly walking and exercise and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay, that's nice. I need to do more of that too. I'll come over. We'll do some walks together in Connecticut. I took there my first. Go. I took my. I took my first walk today since I fell. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, and I was kind of afraid to, you know. <clears throat> but Marjorie came with me, so in case I yeah. fell, she could pick me up. And uh, we did, we did it twice. We also went out to dinner tonight. So. Oh, nice. Yeah, so it was nice. It was nice out there. It was actually a lot. Yeah, very nice day today, actually. Tell us about the drugs, Tony. Yeah, Tony, what what do we have there? Uh, pull one out. Uh, let's see. This was, I'm trying to pronounce it, 120 milligrams. Take one capsule by mouth daily. Dilitia? D-I-L-T-I-A? Dilodin? Dilodin? Dilodin. That's it, yeah. What does that do? Oh, boy. Send that over to me, okay? Alex would like that. That'll help. Dilodin is a kind of form of synthetic heroin, isn't it, uh I'm not mistaken. Is it, is it yeah. called Dilatapin? No, Dilatapin. It's D-I-L-T-I-A-Z-E-M, 120 milligrams. Oh, wait a minute. What is that again? D-I what? D-I-L-T-I-A-Z-E-M. Dilazepin. Diazepam? No. Yeah. That's, that, that is that is uh, Valium. Valium. Yeah, Diazepam is the generic name for Valium. Valium is the name for him. Yeah, okay. Next drug. <laughs> All right, next drug was... Uh, one of her favorites, the old low dose bay. Oh, just throw that away. Okay. okay. That was because she had to take it every day. I had, I had everything lined yeah, up. Yeah, right. Right. Eloquis. What? Eloquis. Eloquis is what? It's a. Is that a cancer drug? What is it? Well, she was she was recovering from cancer, so. Okay, so it's probably Eloquis. <laughs> is a yeah, it was helping her. That's probably the most Oops. expensive one so far. Go ahead. Got a whole bottle. Of name on. I think Eloquis, Eliquis, I think, is a blood thinner. Blood thin? Is it really? Okay. okay. I got 20 milligrams of a, a Divasin, A T O R V A S T A T I N. Difaxin? Yeah. Difaxin? Yeah, I think so. No, atrovastin. Oh, atrovast. Oh, that, that, that's uh, that's for uh, it's a statin. Yeah, it's a statin. For, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It's for your cholesterol. Yeah, Lipitor, tore... the name brand. Yeah, that's what it's I take. Good thing I know something about drugs. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Okay. That's, yeah, that's the most common anti-cholesterol drug. I take it. Me too. <laughs> and then she had twenty-five milligrams of Cardovil, uh C A R V E D I. Blood pressure medicine. Yeah, she had a little slight high blood pressure. That didn't do her in, though. Okay, all right, all right. Next thing. Keep going, keep going. Let's get to the Actually, stuff. that's it. I don't know what happened to the other pills. I got to check. Well, no, the no, no, no. I got to throw some out. No, you, know, you, don't have to you don't have to go look for it. No. I know, how, in the I know I how this brings back out. fond memories of your mother dropping pills. I, I still have a case Monday to Sunday. There's nothing in it, though. <laughs> so, the, so the, Tony, the diazepam, right before you're going to get wired, you want to take oh, one of those. It'll make the high a lot better. I gotta throw these. I gotta walk you down the toilet bowl. Well, no, no, but don't do, <laughs> don't do no, that. Don't do that. Don't do that. I won't throw them things. in the garbage because I'm telling some, you these Chinese listen, people there's some, go for the bottles. There's, there's some, there's some yeah. drug addict out there who really could <laughs> use those. 
That's what I got to take my mother's names off it, though. <laughs> I'll get arrested. <laughs> I'll tell you what happened to me today. Today we're walking down the, the street. And we're coming back to the apartment and on the way we pass, I don't know, a store or something. And there's some guy out front, obviously not. Yeah, they usually sleep in my garden. Oh, I'm telling a story. Oh, sorry. Obviously <laughs> not, uh, not uh, the guy's not, you know, he's not too well off. He's got problems. He's uh, uh, poor. And he says something to me that really made a lot of sense. He uh -huh. said, "No, somebody have a yabba And Marjorie said to me, "What did he just say?" I said, "I don't think there was a word of English in his entire sentence." You know, I think he said, "How do I get on the intersection tonight?" Well, anyway, <laughs> uh, just talk like that. Anyway, um, then. <laughs> Then, tonight as we're going to dinner, we meet up with another guy on the street who, as we pass by him, goes, um, uh, uh, change? <laughs> and she said, what did he say? I said, well, he said one word I understood, change. I said, we should really start a, a new group, which is like... Um, Communication? Well, no, uh, articulation classes for mendicants. Oh, yeah. You know, guys are out in the street begging, give them a good English skills so they can then better tell you what drug and what money they want, you know. But if they just go, now nah, they're nah, going nah, to change, I mean, come on. He's not going to make anything. I want to know, you know, does he want me to change? Does he want change? Does he want money? What does he want? So I think we should have like a a, 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 a class for for what we call mendicants. Do you know, anybody know that term? I've known that term no. for years. No. A mendicant, mendicant is a guy who begs, a person who begs. Yeah. Uh, so, you know. Anyway, that's my that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. And Brian Neary, you're fine, I'm sure. And Josh, what did you think of Biden talking to the premier today of China? Oh, I didn't hear that he did. I'm sorry. Oh, well. <laughs> and, uh, and then we don't need sure to talk was, about it. You know, I'm sure it was really tough talk. You know, if you break any rules, we'll, you know, not do anything. So yeah, <laughs> not have to break any rules. Yeah, <laughs> if, you, if you back up Russia, we won't do anything. We'll be upset with you. Yeah, neener, neener, I think was one of the terms he used. Uh, actually, it wasn't. It, he, what, he, uh, the, uh, the, the premier of China accused us of causing this problem in, the, in, in, uh, in Ukraine. Oh, yeah. well, really? Yeah. Yeah, but the, but the president of China has, has said that, you know, Putin's wrong by killing all these civilians in the news a week or so ago yeah well he did say that nobody's winning in this you Something know like that, yeah. you know i think he he didn't want to throw putin to the wolves because putin's a you know is a is an associate a trading partner a trading partner on the other hand he didn't want to go along with him and say this was wonderful because it clearly isn't you know i mean the only person in the yeah. world who thinks it's okay is probably Rand paul yeah. And every every day they say now they're 20 miles from Kiev. Now they're 9 miles from Kiev. Now they're 2 miles from Kiev. That's every night it's like a countdown and I don't know the last few nights what they've been saying. But I've been staying away from it. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I uh, you're quite right. What what is stopping him from bombing Kiev? Uh who? Putin, he bombs everywhere else in the Ukraine. What's stopping him from hitting the capital? I don't yeah. know, to tell you the damn truth. I mean, it seems strange that they haven't had a big barrage of missiles going in. And I think I people. think that they would do it if they felt they could then take Kiev. Yeah. But supposedly, his troops aren't doing that well. You know, those those trucks ain't moving. Well, they're, we're supplying them with missiles, and they're shooting planes, helicopters, and and missiles that are coming off the planes out of the sky from the ground. Yeah, uh, I don't. I don't think he planned on all this. Oddly enough, it doesn't look that good, but actually, I think Ukraine is doing pretty good. 
I think so too. Yeah, they yeah. are. But what's it going to take to get Putin to give up? Did you see today he had a big rally in? Uh, yeah, Hurt? like he's yeah. taking get taking the Trump uh, idea. Oh, yeah. You know? yeah, it was basically it was a Trump style rally. You know. Yeah. So for those people who don't have a choice, they have to go to that. You know? to well, I mean, go, they're, look, they're, you they're know, he 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 obviously could fill that place, and the way he could fill that place is that people in Russia right now have a complete absence of any legitimate news. Yeah. They're being fed one story and one story only. And that's the story that is being spread all over all over Russia. And they believe this to be the truth. So you can get that many people there who believe that Putin's doing a wonderful thing. He's doing God's work. He's going after the Nazis who have yeah, taken he, over, he, you know, the uh, taken over so Ukraine. Some, yeah. Some people know what's going on because there was something in business news the other day that the top five VPNs have been downloaded many more times in Russia than they ever have been. So these people are downloading VPNs, virtual private networks for you people that don't know what it is. And uh, that allows them to get to news and Facebook and stuff are, are around Russia. Well, they can they can probably watch this show if they want to, you know, okay. using a VPN. They can't prob probably, I think, has YouTube been banned in in Russia? I don't think so. I, I think it's so. Huh? I think so. I think it has. so, too. I all, the, all of them have been banned. I, ha I seem to have read that YouTube wasn't, that it was the only one that wasn't. Facebook, It's not Twitter, been banned, but it's being, it's being censored. It's being monitored. So, in other words, they are, um, they are allowing access to videos that, they deem helpful to their cause and not allowing access to ones like so that. in other words the tucker carlson show goes right on of course Probably, you too. Yeah. oh yeah. yeah yeah him and and yeah. hannity they love they show him over there no. hey i got a question alex if trump if, if you had the opportunity to interview trump on this show would you do it i suppose i would yeah but I would only do it if he agreed to a no holds barred interview, and that he yeah. knew that he was advised in in uh, in the beginning where I stand on him. Yeah. Because I don't want to. I don't want to. I don't like to. Um, uh, you know, blindside somebody. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So I would want him to know where I stood, and then if he still wanted to come on, and he didn't mind defending himself against somebody who disagreed with him. I'd sure be happy to have him on. Well, I mean, some of the shows that he's going on now is, you know, like the, the, the what was that show, the Felk Brothers or something like that? The what? I mean, yeah, it was, it was some some YouTube podcast called the Felk Brothers. <laughs> I mean, you know, where else can he go? Well, I don't think he would come anywhere where he knew there would be a hostile yeah. reception. Yeah. And while I wouldn't be hostile to him, I would certainly, let's see, would I call him a douchebag? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> no longer the president. You call him what you want. Ex president douchebag. Yeah. And that's funny because most people don't aren't they don't they still like say former president, you know, Obama. They when they talk about Trump, they just say Donald Trump. So. No, there it's not even that. If it's if you meet up with Obama, you refer to him as Mr. President. I mean, wow. I interviewed Jimmy Carter, I referred to him as Mr. President. Yeah. yeah. Uh, because you still refer to him as Mr. President, or if it's a guy who was a governor of a state, Mr. Governor, mm -hmm. you know, it's still Governor Schwarzenegger. Speaking know. of governors, isn't Cuomo uh, making a comeback? Yeah, he's uh, he's got ads on oh, here in New God. York now, in which he's oh. saying, you know, I, you know, I found yeah. innocent of this, and you know, not found guilty, and wasn't prosecuted for this, and. Now all charges have been removed, and uh, uh, you ought to think about Cuomo for something, basically. And Chris, Chris Cuomo is suing for like 125 million or something. Yep, yep. He's claiming that it's uh, the part of it is the money they owe him. He mm. considers, and the rest of it is what he considers damages to his reputation. Wow. Is, is and he'll Cuomo gonna if you bring Cuomo back, is he gonna shut down? New York again in a couple of weeks when COVID goes back up? Well, he's not going to be governor that fast. Oh, I don't know. We don't know if he's going to run for governor. We think he's going to run for uh, attorney general. Oh, that would be nice. 
This is Andrew or Chris? Andrew. Andrew. Uh, Andrew. Andrew. Former governor. So Chris threw his friend Don Lemon under the bus. Really? What did he do yeah. exactly? I didn't understand what went on. He started saying that uh, there's the things that... Uh, so when Don Lemon had tipped off... Uh, who's the guy who did the fake uh, mugging the, the black... Oh, actor? yeah. Salad or Samet or something. yeah. Jesse Salette. Jesse Smollett. Smollett. Yeah. So he tipped him off and, and told him <laughs> what was going on uh, with the cops when mm-hmm. he found out before he before Jesse Smollett knew. So who told uh, him that? Don Lemon. Don Lemon. Told Jesse Smollett. And and so Cuomo brought that to court saying, Look, look, he did he did some he did the same thing and he's No, still he there. didn't do the same thing. Oh. He did worse. He did worse, yeah. Yeah, what he was doing is he was giving privilege in information to Smollett right. about the possibility of an arrest, which he could then like run out of town or do whatever he yes. wanted to do. Whereas with the case of Chris Cuomo, all he was doing was advising his brother on how to parse the charges against him. In other words, how to handle uh, right. The, right. the public on this. He got uh, screwed. Yeah, and that was all he did. And there was a difference also. Jesse Smollett is not the brother of Don Lemon, whereas Chris Cuomo is the brother of Andrew Cuomo, and I think maybe that's something you want to do for your brother, right? Yeah. You're, if you're an expert on it, you want to help him. And it was, and that wasn't the only thing. There was another thing that Don Lemon did, I don't remember what it was, that Chris told the, you know, the judge about. Cheated on Chris? No. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would say that... I love you, brother. I would say Don Lemon should have been kicked to the curb when they found that information out. I agree. I don't know if you've... I used to watch that for a couple of years, like almost every night. And Don Lemon looks like he's aged a lot just lately. Yeah. He's, he's got a lot. Of, I don't know if they're putting different makeup on him, but you see a lot of wrinkles and wrinkles down in his chin. Like, <laughs> weird. Well, he's tired. He has like a kid now. Yeah. Well, <laughs> unlike myself, who is just in Welcome perfect shape. The real world. <laughs> not, not a, not a, uh, 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 what do you call it, kid? He's gay, right? Don yeah, Lemon. but they adopted or something. Okay. Or or somebody had the kid for him. I don't know. Who Don uh, Lemon is gay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Him and his husband. Well, so is Smollett. Time. So is Smollett. Right. 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 So that may so have been the brotherhood. Don, Lemon, Don yeah. Lemon has a job still. Smith. Yeah, well, that, that yeah. I if I were uh, CNN, I would question that more than I would ever question Chris Cuomo's. But I think <laughs> they wanted to get rid of Chris Cuomo because also I think he was goosing some women or something at work. Yeah. <laughs> Those Cuomo brothers. Yeah, yeah. And you see what they want to do? My brother says they want to take rename the Tappan Sea Bridge, take uh, the father's name off. Why? What does his father ever do? You know what I think, Alex? My brother thinks they have it in for him. The Democrats. They want Cuomo out. Yeah, but I mean, what, 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 what? I don't know. What, you, uh, what did his father ever do that was wrong? His father's <laughs> name should be there. He's one of the best governors this state ever had. He was great. Yeah, he has nothing to do with it. It's just like they want to disgrace him. They just want Mario to Cuomo. Somebody's after the Cuomos. I don't know who it is. Just about everybody. Uh, <laughs> you probably want to take a number, I guess. Yeah. The mob. Probably, you, you know what it is? Everybody's after the Cuomos who want their jobs. Believe it or not. I mean, yeah. if you look at who was going after Cuomo, who was it? It was the attorney general. You know, and there was it was the governor, right, who wanted his job. So I think he's going after the attorney general post because he wants to uh, unseat that. Shall we call her a bitch to be nice? Uh, who uh, who who threw the tried to throw the book at him and then wasn't able to because they couldn't find sufficient evidence that he had done anything wrong. Maybe maybe he could charge her for slander. Yeah, you're talking about Andrew now. I'm talking about yeah. Andrew. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do not mix it up with Chris. Chris yeah, no, is the, the whole TV thing. Guy. The whole thing looks very, very questionable. Well, you know what went on over at uh, what's been going on over at CNN lately has all been very questionable. I mean, how they got rid of uh, uh, what's his name? The guy who was the, the head of it, the head of CNN. Uh, right. The, uh, oh yeah. Uh, you know that was that was terrible. You know that was terrible. Uh, he had to leave because he didn't say he had a, his girlfriend was working with him. Come on. Yeah. Everybody knew his girlfriend was working with him. They've been together for the last couple of years. You know. They just wanted to get rid of him. Yeah. So, Are you following any of this, Josh, or any of this interesting you at all? Uh, the CNN story, I mean, I knew about it. I, I didn't really 
Yeah, I didn't really, I guess, I don't want to say care. I mean, they, uh, I don't know. I mean, all that cable news now is so terrible, some of it, that oh, it's I don't so know awful. If it really matters if they have who they have in there, you know, it doesn't really, doesn't really seem to be changing. Everybody's reading from the teleprompter <clears throat> nowadays. Well, that, I that, was watching Al Jazeera news yesterday. It was so good. Yeah. I learned so much about what's going on. You know, this you, is news. You, you know what I watched? More honest, you know I what think. I watched today? Today I was watching. We watch the NBC News every night, and I hate Lester Holt. I can't stand Lester. Mm -hmm. He's like a doll. To, to begin with, have you noticed he's a Negro? Anyway, oh, uh, geez. <laughs> oh you're demonetized. Oh, now you're in trouble. Yeah, now you're in trouble. Uh, <laughs> no, he, uh, uh, he. I just find him terrible because he, he's 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 ridiculous. Okay, I agree. In that he 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 doesn't know how to interview. All his questions are always off a teleprompter or pre fed to him. Uh, but tonight I tune in and he's not there. And who's there but Shepard Smith, the old guy from uh, Fox? Yeah. He was good. He's awesome. That guy is a journalist. He was terrific. You know, who do we? Just Lester lose? Holt is a robot. Didn't he, the guy you yes. were just talking about that was a journalist, didn't he win the Mur the Edward R. Murrow Award a number of years ago? Shepard Smith? Yeah, for journalism. I don't know if he did or he didn't, to be honest with you. Yeah. Seems I saw Lester Holt interviewing somebody yesterday, a reporter who'd just been like in a bombing and saw all these dead people, and the, the reporter was practically crying. And Lester Holt had like no emotion mm -hmm. or empathy. It was like... A robot was asking him questions. Oh, yeah. listen! I was it watching. Was... I was watching Katie Turd, uh, Tur, uh, Katie Tur, uh, and um, uh, she was interviewing some woman in in Ukraine, and the woman had just had some terrible tragedy happen to her, and she's crying as she's telling the story, and then Katie Tur says to her, "So how do you feel about this?" Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, she's been crying. How do you feel about this? She wished the person would say, I don't know. I was watching Fox I News. I guess it was the day before yesterday. And they had one of their people interviewing some lady. A guy was crying. His mother's laying in the street in Ukraine, mm -hmm. dead. And he's crying. And the Fox News reporter goes up and taps him on his shoulder and says, Can we interview you? <laughs> The guy's grieving. I mean, leave the guy alone. Dead mothers laying right there in the middle of this. That's what these guys do, you know. But when she said to him, I think, I think what she said to the woman was, so are you feeling bad? <laughs> you know, and she's been crying through this whole interview. I mean, these people are just... Is that a trick question? <laughs> yeah. I mean, what a stupid question. Yeah, that is a stupid one. And maybe in Ukraine, the guy could have, the gal could have got said, "Yeah, I'm really upset, and now I'm going to kill you for asking such a stupid question." Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, yeah. I wonder what happened to Jeff Stein? He's not coming back here. So maybe, maybe he doesn't know he's off. You know. Push the wrong button. That's, that's Be possible. nice. No, I'm serious. You know, sometimes no, sometimes. Look, look at who look at who didn't know he was off tonight. Oh fuck you! I know, and I was watching it. And I did. I forgot to tell you. I was sitting here watching the YouTube. And like, then you Shit. came on, and you didn't tell me. I I just didn't make the connection. I'm getting old. Fortunately, we have. the hell with you! I'm just going to put myself on here. Told. That's all I'm going to have on screen for the rest of the show. Just me. Okay. No, we'll go back. We'll go back to that. Let's see how the ratings go. <laughs> what ratings? We got thirty people watching. Oh, oh, we wow, do 30. now. Oh, there were, there were only 22 a while back. Yeah. Oh, I guess the games must be over, okay? Nobody's watching the games. What do you mean nobody's watching the games? Are you kidding me? I, I, so. I've looked at the numbers. They've been really low lately. You I know, don't know. This That's because the Giants are losing. Yeah, I know. I was watching that. Well, they're, trying, they're trying some pictures, and the brick house was terrible. Oh, really? I didn't practice. Yeah. 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 It's going to be a struggle, but... Still love the Giants. Yeah, well, are you rooting for somebody? Tonight? Or, but, well, the Giants are playing tonight. Have you done but, your, have you done your brackets? No, I don't do brackets anymore. But I was rooting for USF last night. 
Oh, okay. San Francisco, University of San Francisco. They, and they have they have a Ukrainian center, seven foot two. And yeah, they, they just got announced that they're in the tournament and there's a big story on them that his family they got went to Latvia though, so they were they're okay, but yes. Pretty dramatic for that team. So yeah. it was a good game went into overtime. Yeah. Are you watching it? You're not watching it, are you, Josh? You're not into NCAA, are you? And the yeah. Giants are losing bottom of the third. Uh, 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 no, don't, don't, don't do yes. don't do that. Don't do that. That's against the law. What? Giving yeah, out scores. Scores really? You, you uh, know, really? really? That's that is that is the the description of a game. Technically. Oh. Yeah. But it's it's on the. Okay, I don't care. Mind. I don't care. I, I I follow you. No problem. Plus, Your it doesn't. Show. It won't matter <laughs> once this thing is wa people are watching this thing because it will already have been over with. So they don't care. Well, they're this. just pissed that somebody might go and watch the Giants. Now. You already said the the almost n word though. What? <laughs> you did. Yeah, I said, said Negro. That's a per when I was growing up, that was the word you said because you were nice. <laughs> you know what my grandmother used to say? The coloreds. Oh yeah, yeah. My tiny mm -hmm. grandfather. Hey, how about how about if I change what I said to the Cubs are winning? No. The, my grandfather used to say that, the coloreds, and then he always used to oh he used to say the darkies and then he oh, used no. to say uh no. he says, Why you always go out with slant eye girls? Oh my oh, god. Wow. Oh, god. Slant eye girl. Hey, wow. not the old, Ray, right? That's old Italian, right? Hell yeah. Tony the knows colors. that it's the old Italian just like it, I they call like my grandfather used to call Chinese guys Chinamen. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did that one day by accident in San Francisco. Uh, I was talking about how I, when I would I, every morning when I would drive to the show, I would drive at breakneck speed to get to the station on time, and I would have to go through what's the tunnel, the Montgomery Tunnel. Stockton. Stockton. Huh? Stockton Tunnel. Stockton Tunnel. The Stockton Tunnel. Stockton, oh, Stockton. Yeah. Right. And uh, I'd have to go through Chinatown. And one morning I came in and I said, man, it was bad out there. I was happen having to wipe Chinaman off my windshield with my windshield wiper. Oh, no. And somebody went, Chinaman? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. my, so my grandfather, he and I, he played semi-pro ball. So we, we used to go to the games when he was older. I took him to the Giants games. And we used to take the peanut and you break it open and the little little seed part that's in there you look and it looks like a little like the the fu manchu and so he used to pop those open on other kids and say oh you see the little chinaman inside the peanut <laughs> what? well next time you open a peanut when you, you take the actual peanut and break it in half look at the little nut that's there you'll see the little thing coming down where did he live in the city <clears throat> uh in the city uh i Forget where he lived in the city. Then he lived up in Hillsboro. And racism uh, runs yeah, rampant on the Ramble over. tonight. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, they just had a nine people murdered today in, what? in Hillsboro. What? what? Really? Murder? Yeah. California? A, a home invasion robbery where the homeowner had a gun too. And wow. He killed two or three of the bad guys, but the the other guys killed him. His wife is. Their their daughter their the daughter's best friend something like that it was yeah I didn't so I didn't hear about that yeah, yeah I didn't hear about that a guy, wow. a guy got shot in the head right on the corner from where I live oh a couple God. days ago but it was like two o'clock in the morning at least you're a good aim John first year that we were here on on New Year's Eve uh, somebody was shot at our front gate through the no head. way really yeah in Harlem and he lived wow. here he lived here <laughs> oh. but he was a kid who I think was a drug dealer. And yeah. so it was part of a, a drug thing. So there's no there's no crime then, right? There was a lot of crime here then. No, but, I mean it, to shoot the drug dealer is no crime. No, that's just uh, that's just we call public it, service. You know what we call uh, somebody who gets murdered in Harlem on a Saturday night. Saturday night, you know, <laughs> that's, that was the joke. But no longer though. This the this is a pretty dealer, this it's, a, a, it's a public service. This is a pretty safe neighborhood. You know? Now. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now. I was impressed when I saw it. It's nice. Oh, it's very nice. And but, you're right next to the park, too. Which yeah, but great. if you come back and see this apartment house during when New Jack City was being made here. Different story. Okay. Mm. That was a different Harlem back they, then. They had to hire New York City police officers to protect the actors and everything when that was going on. Really? Yeah. Yeah, you know, Alex, when you were talking to Larry, he's going, oh, I hate this place. He's living in fucking the marina. And he's only paying 
seven hundred bucks a month. I know. What? I'm fucking living in the shithole uh and I'm paying 1400 well, Wait a minute, wait a minute. Who's paying 700 for an apartment in the marina? Larry Bur- Bubbles. Oh, Bubbles. Yeah, yeah but Bubbles. he's not really in the marina. He's kind of, I think, on the other side of Columbus. Oh, that's uh, pretty cl- He you, He's yeah. right by the marina. A pretty um, nice area anyhow. Oh, the, the marina. Yeah, but he's got right? a very small, he's got a very small studio. Except for he's been there a long time, He's been right? there a long time. Yeah. 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 Yep, that's why. But he's paying more than me. Fucking, I'm paying fourteen hundred for a piece of shit little uh, studio in in the goddamn tenderloin. Yeah, yeah some of those places know, in the tenderloin. But how long have you been in that apartment? It's been about nine years now. Really? Nine, wow. Ten so years. Yeah. Some it's of those places. Some of those places in the tenderloin are nice. Now, uh, Josh, yeah. I never asked you. Do you do you rent where you are, or do you own your place? No, we we built and own a house. Oh, you built and own a house. Nice. Yeah. How did you, how'd you build it? They bring you the plans by saying, here's plan A, here's plan B, here's plan C. No, no, no. I mean, we just went through a, you know, a construction contractor and, you know. I can't imagine the, Josh doing the actual building. I can imagine him sitting there with a beer watching, <laughs> the, watching the builders build the house. It, was that, was that, a, was that fun to do or was that anguishing to do? Uh, It was pretty bad really really and bad from what standpoint that everything was a problem pretty much yeah, yeah. that's too bad and every time you turned around the price kept going up right it's supposed to be less of a no, i mean the uh, price was locked in you know once the contract and everything was signed yes yeah. just a lot of problems yeah and, that's too you bad. know but no it's we still live here it's i'll have it paid for pretty soon yeah how long you been there We've been here. This is, I think, the sixteenth year. I think. Oh, okay. So yeah, you should be paid off pretty soon. It takes about twenty years to pay those off. Well, it was a thirty-year, you know, when it was built. But uh, I refinanced a couple years ago and knocked a uh, couple years off of it. So yeah, um, I think we don't. We're like less than ten years. Yeah, we're not. We're not that. Far so you away. you paid all the all the interest on it. Now it's just pure mortgage, right? I mean, uh, probably a lot of it by now. I, you know, I don't yeah. really look uh, often, but it's uh, it's probably getting to that point for sure. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, uh, yeah. when we refinanced, I took a little money out and did some things, but I still knocked uh, multiple years off and my payment went up, but I, I didn't care. I mean, I was fine with that. So, What are houses yeah. worth in your neighborhood? I mean, it just depends. I mean... Are they all uh, custom like your house? Uh, no. I mean, you know, it's just all over this whole area. I mean, you know, it's, uh, you know, average is probably, you know, right around 200,000 or whatever, you know, 170 wow. to 200. But, you know, it just depends. I mean, you can go to 30 minutes away to, Muirfield Village Golf Club, you know, where the PGA Tour plays every year and there are houses in there for $10 million, you know, so it just depends mm-hmm. where uh, we're all at, but, you know, we, we, we live, this is a very, like, rural area where I live, uh, so, you know, it's just average homes and everything. It's not a large area, a large population or anything like that, so it's not... Uh, really expensive i mean values are are good i mean i'm sure we could sell ours and make a lot of money or whatever um but i'm just gonna wait cool Uh, where is it where are you i live about 30 minutes south of columbus ohio oh okay so just in a in a just in a rural county that's mostly uh agricultural but uh the, the large city of you know columbus it it creeps closer and closer to here pretty much every year, mm-hmm. uh, every day anymore, you know. So what used to be almost nothing, you know, has just turned into a pain in the ass. So I think maybe maybe when we're done here, we're going to leave because I can't I, – I don't do traffic in large cities. And I don't want to live around any of that. I mean, yeah. how close can't, is can't work stand for you? It. What's that? How close is your work for you? It takes me about 20 minutes to get in. So about seven miles. 
No, it's 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 further than that, but is it? Okay. Um. Oh yeah, I would never live in that county. No way. Yeah. Now we live okay. in the next county over, but like I said, it's you know Columbus is you know huge, and the plant that I work in is you know a, a big industrial and heavily populated area. But you know, I mean, you know, twenty to twenty five minutes because uh, of the roads that I can take. But you know, I mean, I don't like big areas, so yeah we're done here i don't know I, i'm fine with like nebraska or kansas or something i mean i don't want to right yeah i don't want traffic and traffic lights i want you know one gas station where they just sell fucking gas and not cap of fucking fucking cappuccinos or what i mean i just you know <laughs> that's a, you you're got getting, a problem you're too big man too many people living here all these Fucking carpet bag and city people. <laughs> fucking goddamn people. Yeah, yeah, I can imagine. I can imagine. Uh, anyway, um, let me see here. What else do we have? Is there anything else in the news today? Nah, wasn't much of anything. Um, I'm just trying only to... ever talk about Ukraine. Yeah, much. yeah. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah, and there's only so much you can talk about. I mean, it's well, just a sad fucking story i mean you just never get uh any COVID's relief from coming it. back what we'll be talking about covid covid's coming oh it's back. coming back okay making resurgence huh yeah they're trying to it turns out moderna uh, 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 pfizer said he want they wanted to get an authorization for a fourth shot for people 65 and over and today moderna applied for a shot for everybody and the FDA shot. will say 60 and older, and the CDC will say 61 and older. Nobody can make up their mind. Yeah, well, anyway, I mean, the point, the point of the fact is that uh, I'm sure they'll probably okay the Moderna. And as soon as they do that, I'm, I'm up the street getting my shot, you know? I would, I, I would, I would kind of wait a little. I mean, I wouldn't rush out and get it until the CDC and the FDA approve it because both Moderna and Pfizer – it looks like they'll have the shot that covers Omicron uh, built into it, a new, that they've been talking about, the new design that will cover everything back, yeah. including the Omicron variants. And uh, if you go out and get, I, I have friends of mine that went out a week or two ago and got the, the regular shot, and if Omicron shot comes out, they got to wait six months before they can get it, otherwise it's worthless. So. Well, I would say they've already got the Omicron shot in, in the stores now. Maybe. I'm sure they replaced. It hasn't been approved by the FDA or the CDC. Oh, the Omicron hasn't been approved yet. Omicron's uh, uh, almost gone. I, I, well, but it, but the, the the variant that's coming back is Omicron version two. They call it BA two. <laughs> that's the one that's coming back here. Well, it, it's 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 taken over Europe and in the UK. It's the big thing. And the UK. It's is, all the rage, is what you're saying. It was invented by Al Gore. Yeah right. Yeah. The, the, the the that area where the where the EU is and stuff not EU but the, but in England is got about eighty two percent of the population is vaccinated where we're still in the low sixties. So you can imagine we're gonna, if it comes back here. It's okay. We we'll kill those people off too. That's yeah. right. They're all Republicans. Yeah. Who cares? That's right. That's right. Uh, but uh, huh? Yeah, I said the same thing. <laughs> well, listen, the minute they they okay it, I'm I'm Absolutely. I'm up the street. I'm getting it. I think I think we're all going to do that, Alex. I think that's a smart move. I'll be on the list. Yeah, yep. no, I mean, Absolutely. I just uh, uh, mm -hmm. I find now you can walk, just walk into a pharmacy and they do it. Sure. So anyway, I'm still healing. I I uh, I went to c pick up a cup of coffee here with coffee in it. And it was killing me, yeah. uh, but certain positions of the hand, it's fine. Your and face then didn't my, get messed my, up. my my face here hurts though, and I think I fell on that too. Oh, yeah, but it's I didn't get see. I didn't get a mark or a black and blue mark oh. or anything like that. And then mm -hmm. this this, which was a big you know yeah. problem here, uh, you can't see it now. And the reason you can't is I'm wearing makeup, so <laughs> to cover it. Oh, but uh, oh. <laughs> It uh, I I really good man, at it. I took a plots man, that was a that was a buster that one yeah uh, I I really uh, uh, I I I don't want that to happen again 
You know. It could be worse. You know? oh, it could have been worse. Yeah. Could yeah. have been worse. Uh, well, I kept thinking about uh, what's his name, um, who who died in bed after what might have been a fall in his hotel room. Oh, Bob mm -hmm. Saget. Bob Saget. And I kept yeah. thinking about that. And you know, that sometimes you don't know for days that something has happened inside your head you or whatever. You think it's minor and you have a concussion and yeah. you have yeah. bleeding on the brain and, <clears throat> you yep. wake, and you wake up dead. You know, you, just, you know, that, you wake up dead. I didn't hear you woke up when you, you wake up dead. dead for a start. Yeah, I gotta wake up. It kind of, it kind of worked. Well, anyway, it there's our up. theme starting to play. Another week. Another week. If you include Mondays, four shows this week. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Alan. We appreciate it. Josh, good to see you again tonight. And uh, of course. Uh, 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 our old friend uh, 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 John Larkin, and then of course Ray, Ray with that wonderful. Uh, did you change the background? Is there a different? Yeah, there's a different. I made it nighttime. You made it nighttime. Okay. <laughs> and and uh, I hey, it's nighttime outside. You know, I got, I got, I got to say that uh, Tony Magno. It's always good to have you here, and Ray, uh, uh, who, uh, Brian. Oh, there you are. You were still, and I thought maybe we were frozen. B Brian, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us tonight. We didn't have any special appearances tonight by Sir. Yeah, people. she's playing games, so. Yeah, and of course, Jeff. Wonderful talking with you tonight, too. Yeah. Uh, everybody, give yourself a big wave goodbye, and I'll give you a big wave goodbye, too. And uh, say goodnight to y'all. Okay. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. I'm sorry the show was a little short for some of you who are watching this uh, after the fact, but we had to sign off and sign back on again because I had some some problems that I had happen here. Uh, we'll, uh, we'll be back again on Monday at uh, 4 o'clock on Facebook with our pop-up show, and then we'll be back again on next Monday, and uh, next Wednesday at uh, 1030 uh, Eastern time, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, stay tuned for Jack Bishop, who is next over the same GabNet. And also, by the way, I'll see you then. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.